My name is Dr. Zaman and we'll be talking about diabetic ketoacidosis. You have met the three criteria to diagnose somebody with diabetic ketoacidosis. Once you've met the criteria, the things you need to understand is what has led to the problem in the first place. And either that's an absolute deficiency or a relative deficiency of insulin. So when this deficiency happens, of course, you get lipolysis and that leads to generation of keto acids and that's what you actually look at the blood for. The other thing which the hyperglycemia does because this glucose is not being utilized is that it ends up causing diuresis which leads to dehydration. So when you start giving somebody treatments for DKA the actual problem of course was the insulin deficiency so you give them insulin to correct that and then you start dealing with the problems which are initially generated by the hyperglycemia, which is the fluid depletion. While you're doing that, you just need to make sure that as insulin goes in, it's going to cause electrolyte changes. And those changes need to be kept in mind because they can lead to life-threatening arrhythmias if not appropriately managed. So, at the very beginning, your objective is to give people insulin. You start giving that insulin by giving them either a stat dose of 10 units and then give them 0.1 unit per kg per hour and see how things go with that. And what you do is, it now depends on what guidelines your trust follows, but you will see that if the drop in glucose is not more than, or not less than three millimoles, you would consider increasing the insulin by two units and see how things go with that. And then of course, keep on in increasing it in increments till you see the fall as, as desired. And you allow this fall to go on till you get to a, a glucose level of 14, at which time your objective is very much maintaining while the ketoacidosis and the acidosis, the metabolic acidosis or the pH resolves so that's what you're looking for. So as we said, you've started the insulin. As you start the insulin, the biggest concern you have is this is going to, one, utilize phosphate. So your phosphate levels might go low and you need to give these patients phosphate to correct that problem. And it can lead to hyperkalemia because the insulin is going to now push this potassium into the cells. And so the focus very much has to be that hyperkalemia is avoided. And so you give people uh, supplemental potassium to address that issue. Next issue, as we said, was the dehydration. And for that, you give them around 100 ml per kilogram of fluid. This is the first liter is given within an hour. The next liter is given over two hours, then over three or four hours, and then gradually slows down from that. As far as you are concerned, your calculation should be based on the patient you're dealing with and you want to correct the fluid depletion in 24 hours. And you can divide it as need be. If the patient is hypotensive because of the dehydration, then you can keep on giving them boluses of 500 till hypotension is addressed, and then go back to any regime that your hospital follows. So while you're correcting the electrolytes, giving the fluids, giving the insulin, the only thing to keep in mind is that how did the patient start off? And if the patient is severely acidotic, which is to say the pH is less than 6.9, then you should be considering that why is the patient not in an HDO or an ITU environment. And if that is the focus, then those teams need to be involved early on rather than later. And that's kind of a gist of a quick summary of how to manage DKA.